Right, functions. Before we start talking about functions, we need to just have a think about mappings first of all. Now mappings are things that map one number to another. So for example, x squared maps 2 to 4 and minus 3 to 9 and so on. And if we were doing it in general terms, it would map x to x squared. Now we can think of this as having an input and an output to the mapping. So 2 gives us 4, that gives us an input of 2 and an output of 4. If we put minus 3 in, we get an output of 9. If we put 3 in, we also get an output of 9. And 7 and minus 7 would also give us 49, and so on. Now this kind of mapping is called a many to one. So more than one number being input could lead to the same output. So you can have the minus 3 and the 3 both giving you the same output of 9. Now functions are a special type of mapping. They are one to one or many to one. And the point of this is that every input gives exactly one output. Okay, so it's the one part at the end that's important. So we only have one number possible for the input that we put into it. So for example, this function of x maps onto 2x plus 3, or we can rewrite that in um, the notation of f of x. You need to be able to read those in both forms. Um, so with the input and output, um, circles we've got one would then give us an output of five there's no other possibility once we've put that one in it only gives us one unique output minus one would give us one and so on and we could also think backwards and see what would happen to give us an output of eight and that would be 2.5 and so on i'll give you an example of um one that um where x squared is a function, but the square root of x is not. So x squared is a function. Any number that you put into x squared would give you one number out of it, like we saw on the first slide. But the square root of x isn't, because you, if you're doing the square root of a number, you have to include both the positive root and the negative root. So that could give us two possible answers. So that can give you a bit of an idea of what's the difference between a function and, and a mapping that's not a function. Okay, now talking about domain and range next. So domain is all of the possible things we could put into the function. And range is all the possible things that could come out of it. And we usually define these in sets. We talk about sets of numbers and it, we define it by the limits on those sets. So for example, here we have the mapping of x maps onto 2x squared plus 1 for x being all the real numbers. So this is what it would look like if we drew it. We have the domain where x is all the real numbers. That's already given to us in the question. The range is anything that f of x could be. So the smallest it could possibly be would be 1. So that would be when x was 0, it would give us a value of 1. Anything above, or any, any other value of x would give us a value more than that. So the f of x would be greater than or equal to 1, and that's how you state your range, what f of x could possibly be, or the values it could take. Okay, let's do the same mapping, but this time restricting it to a different domain. So x is greater than or equal to 0. So this time we've just got the one half of the graph, the positive side of it, and so our domain is x greater than or equal to 0, and our range now hasn't changed, it's the same as f of x is greater than or equal to 1 again. Okay, if we take that mapping, but we can restrict the domain to specific numbers. So this time x can only be 1, 2, or 3. So it would look like this. And our domain is the 1, 2, and 3. The range is what values f of x could take. So you plug in the 1, 2, and 3 to get those answers of 3, 9, and 19. That's what our range could possibly be. And on that note, we could be asked to find specific values. So f of 4, f of minus 3, it just means we put those into the function and work out the answer that it would give us.